Hi my lovelies, welcome to today's video. Today I'm gonna give you my 10 week pregnancy update. I am currently 10 weeks and five days actually pregnant with twins. I'm 47 years old. I conceived the twins after we did a embryo adoption in the Czech Republic. We used a natural cycle transfer and everything worked out. Before I talk too much, I'm gonna show you what's the most interesting. I'm gonna show you my ultrasound. I had that a couple days ago at 10 weeks, three days. And um, it's in German. I'll tell you afterwards what I talked about with a doctor. So here it is. Tiefer sitzende Kind, okay? Ja. Also tiefer zum Ausgang. Und das ist das oben drüber sitzen. Sehen, da komme ich jetzt schon fast nicht mehr hin. Mhm. Ja? Weil das jetzt schon einfach hier zu ja. hoch ist. Hier ja. Vorne, ja? Krass, ja. ja. Messen gehen. Das hier ist es praktisch das tiefer liegen, das wir noch im großen Bildschirmmodus haben. Ja? Mhm. 3,9 cm, das entspricht da 10 plus Woche. Okay. Mhm. Das obere kleiner gemacht auf dem Monitor, aber ist auch etwas zierlicher. Okay? Mhm. Das obere ist das etwas kleinere. Mhm. Wobei ich das erst im Verlauf glauben kann, mhm. ob das kleiner ist. Oft ist es ein Projektionsfehler von der Kamera, wissen Sie? Ja, weil auch jetzt, der Winkel. Weil vielleicht. der Winkel, guck mal, und ich kann da nicht raus, also ich traue ja, mich das ja. zumindest nicht da unten in ihrer Vagina rumzurühren, wie ist das mhm. meine. Da bin ich zu feige, okay? Alles also, gut. Alles gut. Zwei Höhlen, zwei Zwerge, okay? Mhm. Aber eindeutig in zwei Höhlen. Ja. Ihr hattet, auch, ihr hattet zwei eingesetzt, oder? Genau. Also passen beide am Start wunderbar. Mhm. Gut, top. It was just so amazing for me to see how much the babies have grown. Last time it was just little, you know, like a little blob. And um, in a matter of three weeks, now they look like real babies. I could see the arms and the legs and the head and you know of course the heart beats too and uh, my doctor is really cool he tries to do a really quick ultrasound he tries not to do it for too long because you know it disturbs the babies they don't like it and um, he tries to do it just very efficiently um, look at what's important and then quit so he also said at the end uh, you don't hear that anymore that this is the last time we're gonna have like we were gonna have a vaginal ultrasound next time it's gonna be just my belly and he also said that it was kind of hard um so there's the first baby is i don't know why they don't call it baby a and baby b here they just call it you know there's the baby that sits lower closest to my cervix um that is 3.9 centimeters right now and then the one that sits a bit higher he said it's a bit smaller he didn't tell me the number but he also said that it might be just a mistake because he hardly like he barely can actually get to it anymore the ultrasound doesn't reach up that far and so it's just the angle and he said like i just don't want to go even deeper because that's not a good thing um you know it might irritate and cause bleeding so he didn't want to do that so that's why next time we're definitely not doing it vaginally anymore because you can't see my uterus has expanded so much because it has to hold two babies and the one baby is just higher up everything looks good they're measuring right on time and uh, yeah he said also you know two sacks definitely so that that is the kind of twin pregnancy that is the least problematic because every twin has their own sac they have their own placenta so far everything looks perfect and we're gonna have my next ultrasound uh, four weeks from this week so he wants to do an ultrasound once a month just because it's a twin pregnancy and it's better just to have 
more checkups. Also, he said that in the, you know, in the around week 20 or so for that ultrasound, he wants to send me to the clinic to a specialist prenatal cardiologist so they can look at the baby's hearts and make sure that everything is okay there. He also asked me what kind of tests we would want. He told me that this is an option. I don't have to do any of this. I need to talk about this with my partner. But um, we actually agree that we don't really want to do a lot of testing. We actually don't want to do any testing. We just want to do the bare necessities. Just, you know, there's a lot of things you can try to find out. Of course, there's, you know, trisomy 21 for Down syndrome. You can do blood tests. There are non-invasive tests. But here's the thing. This is just our personal thing. Knowing more, personally, it doesn't help me. It only would make me worry if something is not clear and if there's a chance of whatever it's just not good for me for my soul so our philosophy is whatever god is going to give us we're grateful and whatever it is there is a reason for it so we're just gonna leave it you know just whatever we get that's what we get um so um no extensive testing or anything we're just gonna have what's necessary, you know, to make sure that everything is healthy as far as the pregnancy itself goes so that we have a good outcome and a good birth at the end with hopefully two healthy babies and one healthy mama. As far as my symptoms go, nothing really has changed. I'm still nauseous and last week I had a couple days where it was like really, really bad. It got better and I thought, ooh, maybe I'm over the hump and the next day it hit me again so bad. So I'm not gonna make any predictions anymore. It might be a little bit better for a few days and then a little bit worse. A couple days ago, I had the worst day ever. I think I had the worst headache, I don't know, since I can ever remember. Now I'm someone who doesn't get headaches. I don't get headaches, I just don't. When I drink enough, I just never get headaches. I don't usually, I don't even have aspirin in the house. For years I haven't had aspirin in the house because I don't take it. I don't need it, no one takes it. So, um, and my partner, he's allergic. He cannot take aspirin. So no aspirin in the house normally. A couple days ago, it started late afternoon, and I was, that was the day I went for the ultrasound. I was out and about for a while after the ultrasound. Because it was in the city, I took care of a few things. I went to a store and I bought a birthday gift for my daughter's friend because she's invited for her birthday party this weekend. And then it's my daughter's birthday next week, so I also bought a couple things for her and so I was out and about for a while and I did have something to drink with me, but I just don't think it was enough. And also I didn't eat for a few hours and that came back at me big time. And I really believe that that's why I got this really bad headache. I didn't drink enough and I didn't eat enough. And I felt so bad that night, literally when I moved, my head started throbbing. Luckily last year when I did my frozen embryo transfer that had failed, you know, unfortunately, I had the baby aspirin because that clinic wanted me to do aspirin low dose every day. So I had some of the aspirin protect, I think it is. It's the really low, it's low dose. It's like a hundred milligrams, whatever it is. I don't know, but it's the low dose. And I did have an, an entire package of that because I never, like I only took three or four of those and that, that was it. This clinic this time, they didn't tell me to take aspirin. So I didn't and everything turned out fine. So I took a aspirin the next morning it was better and then it was okay but that was the worst headache that I believe I've ever had in my life I don't know I don't re really remember having really really bad throbbing headaches ever because I just don't get them so that was one episode and that taught me I really need to make sure today I went out I was out for a few hours and I made sure I took a sandwich I took some fruit I took enough water and like I just I kept eating throughout the time I was out there. And other than that, my breasts are still like very tender at night. Every time when I get up and gravity takes hold, it's like, ouch. I can definitely feel they're kind of lumpy, which means that my breasts are just preparing 
to fill up with milk soon. And it's kind of crazy, although it's gonna be months, those hormones have such an effect on you already. And something interesting I read today is, I think that pertains to a singleton pregnancy, but your uterus gets 100 times bigger when you're pregnant. Isn't that crazy? It's like this small normally, like it's tiny. And then in pregnancy, it expands 100 fold. And I think when you're having twins, it's it's quite a bit more too. And I just think it's amazing. To me, it's a miracle. Now, I mean, the babies are like this big already. And I'm thinking, okay, two babies, the size of little, you know, I don't know, little creatures. And you can see the arms and the legs and like, a lot of things are just there already. And um, they're almost at this stage where all they have to do is like just grow and mature. It's crazy how in just a matter of a few weeks, everything forms out of seemingly nothing, but basically out of stuff I eat and drink. The babies just, their DNA has a plan and it's like, you know, it's the manual and then all the stuff is taken from my body that is needed to build that body. It's kind of crazy. So it's definitely amazing. And I do feel tired around, well, really most of the time. I'm just so blessed that I can work from home and I don't have to do anything that's a lot of work. I go for a walk with my dog, so that's a good workout. I try to do a little bit of stretching and yoga here and there and a little bit of working out to get my pulse up a little bit. I do take my blood pressure because it's kind of crazy. Every time when I'm at the doctor's office, my blood pressure is always higher and I don't normally have high blood pressure. I have one of those machines here at home and now I've started taking my blood pressure like several times a day and it's normally like around 120 something over 80 something which is perfect and then when I'm at the doctor's it was like 148 143 and I'm like I'm just it's crazy <laughs> so I notice even you know when you're really active and you know when I arrive at the doctor's office it's like I've driven somewhere I've walked somewhere and I'm nervous I don't know, I can't help it. It's just, you're worked up and like then they're taking your blood pressure and even that moment they're taking your blood pressure, you're thinking, I hope everything's okay. And it's just, a, it's a little bit of a stressful situation which I believe can just, it makes my blood pressure go up. So I just wanna be mindful. The most important thing is how I feel. I have been eating healthy still and just drinking enough is so important. I made sure I, drink enough like at times it's really challenging like today first half of the day was so challenging and I don't know sometimes it gets a little bit better but then after I get through eating again the nausea is so bad so I try to sip throughout I can never drink a lot at once sip throughout the day oh yes I did call a midwife um my actual midwife that I've been talking to who like I'm kind of close to her we're sort of friends already because uh, I've known her since my daughter, you know, since my pregnancy with my daughter, I went to her classes and all. She wanted me to get in touch with another midwife for after I give birth, for someone to come to my house every day to take care of me, because um, there's one who is closer to me and she also is very experienced with twin births and twin mamas so she thought it would be a good idea so I made an appointment with her so we can already because they're always very booked out so we can make sure that around January when I'm supposed to give birth that she is gonna have time for me and she can uh, look after me the insurance pays this this is a thing they do in Germany and I'm very grateful for this I think I don't know how many weeks for twins I think it's longer but Every single day after you give birth, when you're home, a midwife comes to your house, she looks after you and the baby, <laughs> plural here in our case, and it's just really calming to always have someone to call if something, if you have a question or if something doesn't seem right, you have someone to talk to. Um, before you panic, you can just ask her like, is this normal and she can come by and maybe take a look. I remember nine years ago when my daughter was born, I was a nervous wreck because my daughter was a very colicky crybaby. I called my midwife and she came and she's like, 
that's normal. She's trying to adjust. She's healthy. Everything's fine. And um, actually, once I learned to just nurse her whenever, even if it's every 30 minutes, that that made everything better. I plan on breastfeeding uh, the twins. Um, I had no difficulties breastfeeding my daughter. Of course, that was a long time ago, but I want to do everything I can to breastfeed. I don't know if I'm going to have enough milk for both, but we're going to see whatever needs to be done. I'm going to do it. And I know breastfeeding is so much work. It is just so much work. And I can imagine even with one baby, it was so much work. It's like a full-time job. And with two, it's going to be like two full-time jobs. But I'm not tr trying to do anything else next year. I like I'm, no goals for anything else. You know, just keep my business running. And like I have three people, I'm going to work ahead. And like I have a plan of how to prepare so I can take quite a bit of time off. My dog is coming in. Hey, Betty. He heard me talk and now he's coming in here. Hey, buddy. So, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for now. If you don't follow me yet, I would love to connect with you if you're still on this journey of trying to conceive or considering embryo adoption or naturally. I would love to connect with you if you're also an older mama. I'm 47, so, you know, if you're older, there's totally hope if you want to grow your family. And I'm following some older ladies also here. Like, that sounds bad. Like, ladies who are around my age or plus minus a few years. What's with you, buddy, huh? I'm always coming in here now. He usually does because normally the bedroom is like off limits for like dog. Um, but Sandra Wiley, she is also pregnant. She's around the same as me now. She's like 10, 11 weeks, I think. Simply Tanika. My heart goes out to her. She had a failed transfer and I'm so sad, but I also know she's gonna, she's gonna continue on. She has several embryos left and um, so she's gonna continue on. She's also a little bit older than me. I think she just turned 50 this year. Mama in the middle, I also follow her. I think she's a few years younger, but it's just kind of good to know that there are some other ladies who are going through the same and it's, it just feels so good to connect to one another. Have a wonderful day. I hope to see you for one of my next videos and uh, be blessed. Lots of baby dust to you if you need it. Bye.